this is Rachel from Ray K Books, and today I'm going to be interviewing the amazing romance author, Larissa Ione. Hello, Larissa. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to be here. Yeah, I'm very excited. You're amazing. You're one of my favorite romance authors ever. Oh. So, oh my gosh, it's like fangirling. Uh, <laughs> so, I guess we'll get started with, because we have a lot to talk about. You have three series. You have the Demonica, which is like nine books now. Um, the Acro, is that how you say it? Acro, Acro. <laughs> and then Moonbound, and you have another Moonbound coming up. Uh, but what's really, what I'm wondering is how in the world did you get to meet your cover, cover model for Moonbound? Oh, okay. Well, I actually haven't didn't meet him in person, but... Um... He uh, he actually emailed me and uh, uh, you know contacted me. So that's how it, it all started. He is such a down to earth, nice guy. I mean, he, he emailed and said, "I'm going to be on your book and your book cover, and do you want to do anything together, promo wise, or anything?" And I was like, "Seriously, you're <laughs> emailing me?" I mean, it was it was just it was awesome. Um, yeah, Colby is just a really really nice guy. So um, yeah, so we just ended up. Uh, uh, working together on promoting the book and and um, yeah, I still have actually I still actually have signed pictures of him to be giving away in future giveaways when uh, Chain by Night releases in September. Um, I'll be doing some more giveaways um, with signed pictures of him and signed books of of Bound by Night to go with Chain by Night. So um, yeah, that was just really cool. He's he's a good guy. Do you think you're ever going to go on tour with him? That would be awesome. Um, I don't know, but uh, I'd do it if they asked. And then I forgot to tell you, for those watching, if you want to ask Larissa a question, please tweet with the hashtag Larissa live chat, and I will answer them for you. I know that you're out there. I see on my little thing that there are viewers out there. I know you have questions. So, I actually, go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. So, okay, what is coming up? For Demonica, because you said you said I think you said that you were gonna do like some sort of poll to see what character you're gonna do next. Uh, I did on my Facebook page. I asked, you know, who um, would who would people like to see have a story? And um, because I, I actually thought about writing like a short story for Jem and Kynan, um, because a lot of people are like they didn't get their full story, and and I really would like to revisit them. Um, but really what's going on here, and this kind of ties into a question I had on Twitter just um, a couple of hours ago when somebody asked uh, if in Revenant I'm going to be introducing new characters for future books. And the answer to that is kind of yes. Um, I haven't quite decided where I want to take the Demonica and Lords of Deliverance series yet. Um, Revenant is the last book. I'll just put that out there right now. It is the last book that follows the big arc that I've I've written. Um, I will be doing some novellas with some of the minor characters. Um, I've even got a gay romance for a Seminus demon coming up with Riptide next year. I know, I know, because Seminus demons can only be with females, so I've got, but I have a workaround for that. So, mm -hmm. and it's not a cheat. It's going to work. Um, but I'm going to just kind of play around for a little while because ultimately I want to take the series about 20 years into the future and write about the kids. So the kids, yeah, so the kids that are being born now, all the Simonis kids, um, Shade's kids, and Wraith's son, and, and Eidolon, and Taylor's kid and the Horseman kids, they're going to get stories, full length books in the future. But they're not, yeah, so but my head isn't there yet. They're still little, so I can't write about them yet. I'm just not ready to jump forward. So I will be doing uh, books with some of the more, you know, minor characters, Tavin and, and some of the Simonis demons that haven't had stories yet. And all the kids are technically like kind of the same age, aren't they? They're kind of being born around the same age. <gasps> exactly. What if they fall in love with each other? No. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, what I'm kind of looking at is having maybe one of the Seminus boys 
maybe hook up with one of the horseman daughters. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, they could yeah. hook up, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that might happen. I don't know. Can you imagine Thanatos, you know, and his little daughter hooking up with, you know, Ray's son? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't be good. But I was talking about, like, the demons and the um, lords of the deliverance. That's what I meant. But um, another question is about Recif. Recif? Recif. Recif. And then... And that question is, will he ever be completely forgiven by his family members and friends, or will there always be, like, some sort of doubt in their mind? No, they, they're they going to get over it. I think they're already pretty much, with with Revenant's book, I think that that is all pretty much worked out. Um, Recep still feels guilty, um, but his brothers and sister are, are over it. It's, it's more him. You know he's got to work through it, but I think I think by the time Revenant's over, it, it's pretty much there. Right. And so Moonbound is the book that's coming out next. So do you know, like, how far in advance are you thinking of? How many books do you think you're going to do for this one? Uh, I've got four plotted out, um, four full-length books plotted out. Uh, after Hunter's book, which is Chained by Night, uh, coming out September 30th, uh, I want to do mine. And then uh, Riker's son. So Riker's son, when he he just needs to mature a little bit. So I had to do mine first. Um, but that's when we're going to bring everything to a head with the bad guys, um, Daedalus Corporation. Um, and I don't know where we'll go from there. I've got some novellas for the, some of the other characters that I might do. But basically, I've I've really got it the the arc that I've written out done with four books. And do you, with the four books, do you kind of have an idea of what you want to do after that, or are you kind of iffy and playing with ideas? Yeah, that's where I am right now, is playing with ideas. I'm I'm not very good with with uh, planning into the future. I can get a couple books ahead of myself, um, but it, then, I don't know, I've just got such a scattered brain, I just come up with you know, weird ideas here and there, and, and eventually things work out, but I usually only plan about two books into the future. And we have a Twitter question, and that question is, um, have you ever met any of the models from your book covers? Oh, no, I haven't. I have not been that lucky. I've met a lot of cover models um, just, you know, at the Romantic Times conventions and stuff, but never one of my cover models. I would like to, I would like to meet one someday. Do you think that, like, if you ask ask your publicist or something, like, hey, can I do something? Are they like, no, or do they like the idea? Actually, I will bet you that would probably be pretty pretty okay. Um, I I could probably go to a cover shoot. Um, a lot of a lot of my author friends have gone to cover shoots, and then they get to you know see the actual cover, you know, in the infant stages and they get to meet the cover models so that would be something really cool I would love to do. Good luck because I would love because you take pictures and I want to see those pictures. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. All over our internet. <laughs> Very nice. So you were telling me before the chat about all of the swag that you have. You have pens, you have you have what? What was just like some blew my mind. Jar openers. Oh yeah. Jar openers. Oh, those are awesome. People are always like, what? What is this? But I mean, have you ever tried to open a stubborn pickle jar? Yeah. No, not with these things. They are magic. So yeah, people want these. Trust me. Yeah, I yeah. want one. But <laughs> my question is like, how did like how did did you just like come up with a list of what you want to like give away in your swag? Like, how do you get these items? Um, you know, I, I always look at things that I use a lot, and that's what I want to give people, or they're just things that I use on a daily basis. I think one of my very favorite swag items is from Linda Lale, is that how her middle name is? Linda Lale Miller? Anyway, um, she had at a, an RWA conference one time, uh, little cat food can lids, you know, and that is like the best swag ever. I use it 
every single day. So I always think of that and I'm like, okay, I really just need to do things that people will use. And I use my jar openers, seriously, several times a day. I'm open on a lot of jars, apparently. Um, but yeah, so I like things that I use. So I have another question about the, sorry, change of scenery because it's getting dark out. So I'm trying to like play with lighting. Um, so there's this like thing going on with the romance reading commu reader community about weight. And um, I'm seeing a lot of forums and stuff saying that the ad average American woman is a size 16 but there's really no size 16 plus being written about. Um, do you think that's something you might do in the future? Or is that something that romance writers just don't do because it might not sell? What's up with that? I think that I wouldn't have a problem writing a, a heroine that's, you know, bigger than a stick. I mean, I just, I think that I stick with what I know and I'm thin. You know, I, I think for me that's just kind of where it goes. Um, so no, I wouldn't have a problem with it and I've read romances with, with actually plus size heroines and um, you know, it, it doesn't bother me at all. It's, they're people, you know, and, every, and, and it can be an insecurity for them or they can be comfortable with their body or whatever. It's just that, you know, I tend to stick with what I know um, and I'm, I'm thin. <laughs> That's totally fine. It's just, it's just a question. It's okay. Um, so my next question is about the covers again. Really, who designs them? Like, who picks out these models? Oh, you know what's funny is uh, my editor at Grand Central. She will sometimes send me pictures of some of the people that they're considering and um, say, you know, what do you think? Um, which is really, really fun. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, what was the question? Oh my gosh, I just, I was, you know, got <laughs> lost in remembering what these guys look like. It was really awesome, so, sorry. It's okay, that. it's okay. You, you answer the question anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, so what is the hardest and the easiest thing about writing a book? Oh, that is a hard question. Um, gosh, I think the easiest part for me is dialogue. I love dialogue. I can just sit and just write a book of dialogue. Um, so that's really easy. Um, the hardest part is probably revisions. Um, I write a really, really, really rough draft. I mean, it is really rough. And, um, Revisions are extensive for me, so revisions can be really, really hard. I think that that's probably the hardest part and my least favorite. And what 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 challenges you in writing? Like, what's a challenge that you always try to overcome when you write? Writing fight scenes and sex scenes. Those are the hardest scenes to write. They take me forever. I can write anything until, you know, and I, I'm fairly fast until I get to a, a love scene or a fight scene, and it takes me days to write one of those. It's just, it's really, really hard trying to figure out the, um, the blocking of it, really, is what it comes down to. You know, where you put all those knees and elbows and tongues and, you know, it, it's just... So that, difficult. <laughs> it's just really, that's really hard, I, I, I'd say. Those are, that's a challenge. And so you write about urban fantasy and paranormal. That's your that's your thing. But do you think that you're going you can write in or you want to write in a different subgenre in the future? Um, you know, when I first started out, I wrote historical, and then I moved to contemporary, and finally found my voice in paranormal. Um, but that I still love contemporary and historical. I may you know, play around with them someday again. Um, but I think that for me, paranormal is where my voice works best and where my writing style works best. 
that or fantasy horror. I love horror. I'm, I definitely am going to write horror someday. Um, but uh, yeah, that I, I'm not sure that I my voice and the darkness that is in my voice really works for contemporary or or you know some of the other romance subgenres. And now we are going to be playing a game called oh. Would yeah, Yes, <laughs> called Would You Rather. And if you don't know what it is, Would You Rather is I would ask Larissa, would you rather eat apples or oranges for the rest of your life? And then she'd have to say apples or oranges. But this is a literature edition. So the first one is would you rather Fight next to Hermione from Harry Potter or Katniss from The Hunger Games? Oh my. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, uh, I'll go with Katniss uh, because I tend to be a little more physical. Um, so yeah, probably, probably Katniss. The second one is would you rather read a book that is written poorly but has an excellent story or read one with weak content but is written well? Uh, oh, gee. Um, uh, I, oh, boy. Probably the, the first one, the poorly written one. Oh, but that one's tough because I get hung up on the, the writing. So, you know, but I have read a lot of books that are really, really well written, and I really appreciate that. Sadly, I can't get into them because, you know, maybe the story isn't what I want. So, boy, I don't know. I, I think I have a hard time with both. Mm -hmm. And then, would you ra who would you rather have as a child? Harry Potter or Hermione Granger? Oh, Hermione. Just, I think because she's... Um, yeah, she's really good with magic. I mean, not that Harry isn't, but, you know, I don't know. I'd, I like I like Hermione. Would you rather write novels where all the characters are women or all men for the rest of your writing career? Men. Yeah, hands down. They were my favorite characters to write. So, um, yeah, and I always say that uh, if I open up a book and it starts out in the man's POV, um, I'm hooked instantly. If it's the female, it might take me a little bit longer to get into it. And my favorite characters to write are always male. So um, definitely male. And then would you rather only write your books in trilogies or standalones? <laughs> trilogies. I, I do appreciate a standalone now and then, but I'm the type of person that when I get into a story, I want to keep reading and I want to be immersed in that world for as long as possible. So I've actually read very few standalones just because I want to stay in the world. And then the same way with movies, I always want sequels. You know, um, even if they suck, I want sequels because I want to stay in that world. Would you rather write a book without using conjunctions or have every sentence of your book begin with one? Uh, without conjunctions. Would you rather write a plot twist you hated or write a character you hated? A uh, plot twist because at least I can get past that. With a character, you're stuck with them through the whole book. Would you rather a super successful movie be made from one of your books or a long-lasting television series? Uh... Either one. Not picky? <laughs> Not picky. Either one. I want either one. Would you rather critics rip your book apart publicly or never talk about it at all? Oh, boy. Um, you know, every time I get a really, really negative review publicly, I always think, gosh, I'd rather that they just not talk about it. Um, but if they're not talking about it, it means that you know, maybe nobody's reading it. So uh, my heart says, no, I, I, I don't want it to be public at all. And my brain says it's probably better to let them rip it apart in public. 
And that concludes our Would You Rather game. Yay! Yay! <laughs> you did a really good job. No sweat. So I want to go back into you like liking to write um, male characters more. I find that to be very interesting since you're female. So can you please explain to me why men capture your heart? Um, I think maybe because I was always a tomboy, you know, growing up. I've never been the most feminine person. And um, so I don't know. I think maybe that's, that's why. Uh, I'm not sure. But I just, I really, really like the male, just writing the male point of view. I can be rougher and tougher and more raw. Um, and although I've got to say the female characters I've done who um, have been that way as well, I've loved writing them too. Um, from a mortal writer, Lemos. I loved writing Lemos because she's very, very, she's, you know, in a lot of ways, very male. Um, and very badass. Yeah, she's very badass, Alpha, and of course she ended up being the heroine that most of my readers hated. So, um, yeah. What do you mean? Why did they hate it? Oh, that's the, she's my most probably that's the worst reviewed book of, I've written is Immortal Writer. Yeah. What? Yeah, the the reviews when they first came out traumatized me. I mean, see, that in in fact, when people say, "Would you rather have terrible reviews, you know, and at least they're being reviewed," I'm thinking, no, because. <laughs> Immortal Writer was that way. I mean, seriously, people hated her, and um, so I still kind of, uh, uh, I still kind of cringe when I think about that. But um, you know, and and same with Taylor from um, Pleasure Unbound. A lot of lot of readers hated her too. So I, I um, writing the tough heroine is uh, is kind of tricky. You know, when I do write heroines, I like to write them like that. It's just you can't always do that because you know. You got everybody's different. Plus, readers hate them. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Larissa. I'm so sorry. I liked it. So at least you have one person out of all of your fans. Yay! No, <laughs> I, I do have people who who like them, but it's just that the ones who don't really don't. <laughs> so you say that there are a lot of reviews about not liking her, which means you read those reviews, or do you tend to not read bad reviews of your books? I read the first ones when they first when the book first comes out. I, you know, I just kind of want to see how the response is going to be, so I'll read the first reviews. Um, after about the first week or two, I'm done. I, I don't go back and 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 look um, unless somebody points me toward one. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do read them right at first, and after that. Nope, because it, it'll totally freeze me up. I, I if I read a bad review, I am locked up for a long time. So I just have to I just have to avoid them. You know, that kind of brings up something. I remember a long time ago. This could have been like a year ago, and you posted about um you didn't know that there were Facebook messages, and so you went through them, and many of them were very nice, but there were a few that were mean, and you said that the mean ones really just made you feel like shit even though there were multiple like more be better ones yes so it's the same same concept um, <laughs> that that really stuck with me obviously because <laughs> I can still remember it but uh, what kind of I'm really curious you don't have to say but what kind of stuff did they say that was so bad like what why what could they say oh um things like you know don't, you know, I loved this book, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Don't F it up, you know, like like you did with Immortal Rider or, you know, things like that. Seriously, I actually get people telling me that. Um, or, um, you know, gosh, you know, why, why would you write about hell? You know, that's where you're going to burn. I mean, oh, oh, my God. It's like those ones are kind of funny because I can, you know, get pat. It's like really, wow, you're a jerk. Um, but um, I've had some really, really just harsh, harsh, and, and they're the ones that are always couched in niceness. Those are the ones that bother me. The, the flat, the the flat out, you know, you're a horrible, skanky writer. You know, those ones don't bother me because they're clearly just trying to, you know, 
push my buttons. It's the nice ones that start out, you know, I've always loved your books, but this one, I hate it, I'm never going to read you again, I'm going to tell my friends, never read you again. I mean, those kind are like, oh my gosh. Um, you know, I've had people threaten threaten me. I've had people threaten to ruin my career. I have had people stalk me. I have had I, I get I really I just get the weirdos. So um, so yeah, I stopped reading my Facebook messages because I was tired of that. They were I mean they're they're rare. Uh, for every twenty, you know, there's one harsh one. But that one harsh one is enough to I you know just don't want to deal with it. Stalkers? They oh. were stalking you? Mm hmm Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I had one one girl from from Hawaii who I actually had to track down through her ISP and um I found out, you know, exactly where she lived, um and I had to have I seriously I had to file complaints against that one. Um I actually she ended up being a senior in high school and so I actually found out who her father was. He was a colonel in the Air Force, stationed at Hickam Air Force Base. And I actually got hold of him and his command to get her to lay off me because she was she was sending harassing emails from several different computers. Um, oh, she was yeah, she was she was something else. <laughs> like I'm kind of in shock. <laughs> like kind of in shock. But um, so but once you emailed the daddy, like. It was gone, right? It was done. Yeah, that was it. That was pretty much it. She's very young to be reading romance, isn't That's she? That's what I told her. I told her to go back to reading Twilight. <laughs> yeah, I bet that went down really well. <laughs> yeah, she didn't respond to that one well. But, uh, yeah, she was really upset because uh, she'd read uh, Passion Unleashed and was upset because the hero... Oh, she loved that book but then she read Ecstasy Unveiled and the heroine wasn't a virgin and she was very upset about that because women should be virgins but men can play around all they want and so she was very upset about me writing a slut and therefore I must be a slut and I don't know it was just she was crazy yeah oh, she probably hasn't read any other romance but yours you're the lucky one yeah. out of all of them <laughs> yeah good job yeah, crazy people. <laughs> no, okay, we'll we'll stay off of this topic now. Uh, so we actually have a Twitter question. And then, yay! I know there's. I can see there's 25 people watching this, and now one of them are asking questions. Come on, guys. This is this is your favorite come author. Come on, come on. I'm ready. I'm ready for you. Yeah, I see you right there. <laughs> like you're watching. So I want to hear them. So the Twitter question is how long does it take you to finish writing a book? Um, you know, I can write a draft, a, a fast draft. I can do it if I have to in about 2 months. But the revision process is what gets me. So um it takes months. <laughs> months to revise and get it to where I need it to be. Um, I would say that, in general, it takes about five months to write a book. Um, you know, from from beginning, sitting down, and typing the first words, till the end when I feel decent about handing it into my editor. Um, lately, I've kind of gotten behind, so instead of being able to do revisions before I hand them into my editors. Uh, unfortunately, they've gotten stuck with the rough drafts, and then it takes me forever to do the revisions that that uh, need to be done. But um, yeah, long story no short story long five months. <laughs> so I actually have a quite a follow up question, and I forgot it at this moment. I just forgot it. So while I uh, try to remember, let's play another game, shall we? Okay. <laughs> the game is called fill in the blank with the first word that pops into your head, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll That's explain it. Very right. So I'm going to say a sentence, and then I'm going to say at the end blank. And when I say blank, you have to say the first word, one word that pops into your head. It can be spaghetti. It can be winter. It like, doesn't matter. Whatever pops into your head. Okay, so the first one is when I first sit down to write, I blank. Spaghetti. What? You said. <laughs> yeah. I drink Smart. coffee. 
<laughs> That's fine. Um, I was joking. It's the second one is when I write, I have to have blank. Uh, coffee. Coffee is going to be the answer to everything, pretty much. Just so you know, alcohol or coffee. Okay, good to know. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll, we'll see. You never okay. know what happens in your head. Okay, so. The third one is when creating a new character, I want them to have blank. Hair. I'm happy you didn't say alcohol. I was like, I was like, what if she says alcohol? I was going to. I was like, alcohol. Oh no, I'll say something different. Hair. I don't want them to be bald. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I'm glad you you changed that. I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> um. All great mysteries have to have blank. A dead guy. I don't like it when a book, I don't like a book when it has blank. Uh, uh, nothing is popping into my head. I've got a fruit fly flying around and it's like bothering me. So if you see me like doing that, that's why. Um, if, what did, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's late. Uh, okay, it is. Uh, let me get it. Okay, uh, when no, I don't like a book when it has blank. Oh, you know, animals dying. Oh, so true. Uh, are you one of those people that you cry when the animals die in movies? Oh yeah. In fact, I always, always, always look up before I watch a movie. I look up um, www. Does the dogdie.com and that way I can find out if any animals are going to suffer or die before I even watch the movie. Does that include horses? Yes. It, okay. It tells you what, what all the animals, whether you know they're hurt or die or whatever. I always do that because I cannot stand it. It makes me so mad. It's funny you say that. When I was younger, I was watching Lord of the Rings, the third one, and you know the horses, they were riding horses and like the giants were stomping on them. I'm like, the horses! I know! And my brother's like, you know, no, no, my brother's like, you know, people are dying, right? And I'm like, but the horses, <laughs> like, yep. yep, that's me. High five, like seriously, we're cool, we're cool like that. Okay, so, um, when I read a bad review of my book, I blink. Drink, alcohol. <laughs> Has to be the alcohol kind. It's okay. I'm there with you. Um. And then the last one is my character reaches out of the pages, takes my hand, and I blank. Uh, I want to say something so naughty right now. Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just wanted. There's one word, and it's so naughty. But um, say it anyway. I'm, I, your viewers. Alcohol. <laughs> That's fine. It works. <laughs> it it does do. It makes you do crazy things, right? There you go. It reaches out of the pages. Yeah, I probably scream actually. So I ultimately, that's that's probably what happened. And that concludes our game. Yay! You did so well. Now everybody knows that you're an alcoholic. <laughs> ah, they knew that anyway. That's I've never kept that a secret. <laughs> so, um, oh, there is one Twitter question, but it makes no sense, and I don't know what it says. It says, well, we best anymore from UG. Oh, um, I'm guessing, will we best here? anymore from, okay, there's another one that actually makes sense. This okay. is from Christy. <laughs> there was a typo there, like a... Uh, uh, spell check error, error there. I think so. Is it re say it, Jackie? Because I don't, I don't. We don't know what that means. Um, Christy asks, "What made you think of having the Demonica series start in a hidden demon hospital?" What would I think? What was what that? What made you think of having the series start in a oh. hospital? Oh, because. Um, a long time ago, I was watching Angel, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff, yeah. and Angel got hurt really, really bad, and I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, he needs to go to a hospital, 
but he can't go to hospital because he's a vampire. And so I just kind of started putting, like, you know, my little head just started kind of going, going, and I thought, well, you know what? What if there was a hospital for them? And it was run by vampires and demons and, you know, underworld creatures um, so that they could get help when the slayers chop them up. So um, that's how that that came into into being. I just, they needed their own hospital. So. so we thank Buffy the Vampire Slayer for that. You can. That was where the initial spark started. I've, I've actually always been interested in emergency medicine. Um, I wanted to be a doctor, you know, a million years ago, but um, I pass out at the sight of blood. And um, so I, you know, I actually became an EMT to get over that and to um, learn, you know, basic medicine, emergency medicine, and because I just always loved it. And so when I saw Angel get hurt, and it was like, oh, he needs to go to a hospital, my love for medicine and the paranormal just kind of melted together into the perfect series. And then history was made. <laughs> yes, history was made. <laughs> so we have another Twitty Twitter question from Mary, and she asks, what is your favorite character, I guess she means who, is your favorite character of all your books? Um, that, you know, it's hard because I love them all. Everybody's got to say that. I love all my characters. But no, I really do. Um, but certain ones stick out and stay with you and are easy to write. Um, and I would say that Wraith uh, from, from Passion Unleashed, or Passion, yeah, Passion. Oh, my gosh, I can't even remember my own titles. Um, but anyway, uh, Wraith is probably my favorite just because he's so easy to write and because he came so, he was just so natural for me. Um, I just loved writing him. I also love Eidolon a lot, um, probably because he started the whole thing and, you know, he's, he's kind of, uh, he's, He's everybody's rock, um, so uh, yeah. I think uh, I'd have to go with Wraith because he's so easy to write. We have another Twitter. Like they're all coming in like right now, <laughs> like at the end of it. So let's let's get through these, man. All right. Um, <laughs> the next one is, how do you think up of all these fight scenes? Um, I'd have to say I just. I watch a lot of movies. I guess that's you know what it is. My favorite movies are action movies, and I love to watch the way they're choreographed and stuff. Um, they are the hardest scenes for me to write for sure. But I act, but at the same time, I love the fight scenes. Um, the bigger, the better. Um, they're just those are a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So. It's and then that person, it's like in an Asian language, some other language, so I don't know how to say the name, but uh, they ask, are the characters of Reaver and Harvester inspired by real people? Mm, not really. Um, pretty much everybody in my books are just figments of my imagination. Everybody's just kind of in my head. I, I don't ever base anybody on anybody real. There, there might be a, a trait now and then that somebody has that I will use, but for the most part, no, they're, they're all just you know, little talking voices in my head, which is probably not as scary as it sounds. And uh, so, uh, this is a personal question. Um, so, where do you, like, get all of these names? Because Reaver and Harvest, like, Harvester, like, why'd you name her Harvest? Uh, not a bad name. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's like a random name. You know, the weird thing about their names is that when I originally wrote Reaver, um, I just I liked the I just liked that the way that Reaver sounded. Um, then Harvester, I'm not even sure where I got that. She just kind of appeared on the page, and I didn't even realize at the time that Reaver and Harvester were going to get together. And it was only later that I realized I named them the same thing. I mean, really, Harvester and Reaver mean pretty much the same thing. It was complete coincidence. And the really strange thing is, as I've been writing uh, the Demonica and Lords of Deliverance series, things have gone that way. Just weirdly fall into place. Um, I really I found that 
absolutely true with Revenant's book, and readers um, will, will maybe see what I mean. Um, I'll, I'll give a little more insight when I don't have to worry about spoilers, but Revenant's book, oh my gosh, it, it freaks me out sometimes just how um, everything fell into place books ago. I wasn't even planning on how it was all going to turn out and then it, it did. It, and it came from a lot of things from the Bible. I mean it was just weird how everything um, turned out. But yeah, the names, um, very few names. I, I don't make up many of the names. Most of them, especially my older characters as we were talking about um, earlier, come from um, you know, history, old, 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 old names, because these people were born thousands of years ago, so they're not going to have names, you know, like Dennis. <laughs> here, you know, so, yeah. So what what do you think, if Reaver didn't, like, lose his memory, and he knew about his kids, like, all along, how do you think it would change history? Would it change history? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think he... He was very young back then. I don't know that he would have, you know, been the greatest father at the time. Um, but I, yeah, it would have changed history because the horsemen wouldn't have gone crazy, and um, you know, they wouldn't have kicked off everything that got kicked off when they went, you know, nuts. So um, yeah, it would have definitely, definitely changed changed history. Reaver would have been there for them. Like I said, he might not have been the you know perfect father, but he would have at least been there for them. And um, yeah, the entire course of history would have been changed. And so we have another Twitter question from Jamie. She asks, "Will there be any future Sydney Croft books?" Oh yes, yes. Uh, Stephanie and I are actually working on. Um, we just turned in one that will be out in December, um, and it is called Three the Hard Way, and that is a uh, that one is a male, male, male <laughs> uh, novella. So that one's, um, but that one is in the Acro uh, universe, and we will also have. We're hoping in September to have another uh, gay romance come out from um, Acro, and that one's called Into the Storm. And then in the next year, uh, we're entirely sure what we're going to do, but we do have another male-female one that we'll be working on uh, for next year. After that, we're not too sure, but we do have three coming up and then probably the next, uh, next 12 months. And then Jamie also asks, what is it like to collaborate on a book and how does it even work? Um, it works for, Steph for for me and Stephanie. We have the best time. Um, it's very easy for us. We what we do is we take characters. Our you know usually she writes the males and I write the females, um, but we'll share the minor characters. And um, what we do is we just pass it back and forth. She'll write a scene in the in um, the hero's point of view and pass it to me, and then I write mine in. Um, the female or the hero, another hero's point of view is we're doing the male male stuff right now. Um, and we just pass them back and forth and we very rarely plot. Um, we react off of each other. So she'll write a scene, I'll have no idea what she's going to write. And she'll send it to me and my character will have to react based on what she wrote. It's just, it's, we decided to do it that way because that's how real relationships work. You know, you're always reacting off of somebody else you don't know what they're going to say or what they're going to do. Nobody can truly know somebody that well. And so you're always reacting off of the other person, and so that's how we write. And it's just there's a lot of energy there, and we have a lot of fun with it. And you said the, I think, in the beginning, it was 45 minutes ago. Excuse me if I get this wrong. But uh, you said that the um, Demonica series, there's going to be a male-on-male, -male, correct? Yes. So. Where did you come up with that idea? Were you just like, huh, I haven't had any gays in my book yet, so we should just... No, 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 I've always... Oh, I, I wanted to... With the Seminus Demons, you know, when I originally thought of them, they were all... Well, Seminus Demons are all male. 
And then I came up with Sin, who's a female feminist demon. She had to be the oddball, and, you know. And I came up with a way to get a female in there without breaking the rules that I'd already, you know, put in place. And I've always, um, I have a lot of gay friends. Um, the gay community is just is very important to me. And I've always wanted to write um, gay romances. I just had started out, you know, with the typical. Um, Heterosexual romances, so I just never, I never went there. But I do have characters in my Moonbound series. I've got a gay couple, um, and in the Demonica series, I just knew that I had to get, I had to get um, some gay characters in there, and I wanted to do seminist, a seminist demon because I like to challenge myself and do something that you know I set a rule, but you know what? I want to break this rule, and I'm, it'll, you know, it'll happen logically. It'll make sense when you see it. But um, I just I like to challenge myself like that, and um, you know, just expand the world and and you know, really reflect what's around us at the same time. Very very nice. And I'm we have another question. I was about to say this is the last question, but we'll just we'll take one more Twitter question. Awesome. And then I'm gonna have my one question, and then I'm gonna tell everybody about the giveaway because we've gone way over. Uh, Jamie asks. Um, Ward recently released a great, well-received book with gay couples as the focus, which is true. I think it was like one of her recent ones. Mm -hmm. um, will you ever publish a full novel like that? I'm never going to say never. Um, I don't have any plans for it right now, but um, I will never say never. I do have the novella coming out. Um, and actually, there may be a couple more after that because I'm I'm setting it up so that I can do that um, because I'm really enjoying it. I am so loving it. Um, so I'm not going to say never. It's just that right now I don't have any plans for a full length um, gay romance. And then the last question I like to ask authors is do you have, because I, I get this question all the time, do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Yes, um, gosh, tons of it, <laughs> but um, oh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll try and like um, you know keep it brief. Um, I would just say that don't give up. Um, I nearly gave up once, and that would have been a huge mistake um, because I got published pretty much right after I gave up. Um, so just you know keep keep working and listen. Listen to your critique partners and enter contests and stuff. Learn the rules and then learn to break them. You know, trust your gut. And um, and like I said, really, the most important thing, I think, is learn the rules. Because when you know them, you know how to break them effectively. So, um, you know, learn as much as you can and then just let yourself go. Tear to my eye. No, I'm just kidding. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so so now we're going to be talking about the giveaway because Larissa here is again like amazing. I say it all the time, and she is going to give away a tote bag and swag, which is if you were listening, she gives she has a lot of swag of like random items that are awesome, like a pen and tattoos and jar openers. So uh, you get a lot of those. And there's two winners of these swag giveaways. And this is international because she's extra awesome like that. I mean, wow. Um, and this also ends next Sunday, which is August 10th. And what you need to do in order to win is this live chat window once I click the stop broadcast button is going to be a YouTube video and when it is a YouTube video I'd like you to comment on that video and uh, blah, blah, blah. second thing is this is optional because not everybody has Twitter but if, uh, follow Larissa on Twitter and then comment with your username so I can verify the entry and I I think I said everything. Um, and thank you so much, Larissa. This was a lot of fun. It was awesome. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.